I bet you'd like to have more fun with your pictures, more fun scrapbooking. I bet you'd like to let go of the guilt and obligation that you feel to years and years of pictures, whether they're in boxes and in bins under your bed or whether they're on your computer. Well, you've come to the right place because I'm Stacy Julian and I'm here with cameraman Brad, hi Brad, cameraman Rick, hi Rick, <laughs> in my TV studio. And I am here because I want you to feel more successful capturing and sharing your pictures and your memories. Today, I'm gonna to talk about the five steps, the five fundamentals, because they're fun. Five fundamentals of productive scrapbooking, okay? Step number one, viewable pictures. You need to have storage binders. And number two is viewing frames. So storage binders and viewing frames work together to help you see your pictures. Step number three is you need to have a place where your pictures can be aged, where they can be mingled, and where you can make connections. And that place is called category drawers. Step number four, you need to have a place where you can hide all of the pictures that you really don't want to deal with. You don't want to throw them away, but you don't want to deal with them. That's called cold storage. And step number five, lots of extra files and tools that are very specific and unique to you and your creative process. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna walk you through those steps and show you some of those things that I talked about. So the very first thing that's most important so that you can feel motivated and inspired to scrapbook is you need to be able to see your pictures. And I'm not talking about sitting down in front of the computer and scrolling for 45 minutes to find the pictures you want. I'm talking about printing your best pictures, those that have two and three stars. If you watched the last episode, you'll know what that means. And putting them in something called a storage binder. Okay, a storage binder is just a photo album where you can slip your best pictures that you really want to scrapbook. Okay, as I flip through here, you'll see that there's blanks. When you see a blank in my storage binder, that means that I have scrapbooked that photo. Okay, and I have a page that I just recently scrapbooked. Oh, see, blank pages I've scrapbooked. I have a page that I want to show you. The pictures came directly out of my storage binder. And this is the page right here. It's my, my cute little daughter, Addie, and she was getting ready to go to her first birthday party. So a picture with her and her gift. And I simply wrote, Addie, you're a gift. And I got to talk to her about, about how fun it is to see her dressed up and ready to go. Now, a couple of things you need to know about me. I'm a huge advocate for imperfection, not just embracing imperfection, but practicing it. Because scrapbooking is a homemade craft. It should look like you made it. It doesn't have to look perfect. So. Cameraman Brad, can you come in real tight and look how Stacy, I cover up words if I spell them wrong or I don't like the way they look. I just cut a piece of paper and I cover them right up and I'm totally okay with that. And you should be too. One more tip about this page is I love to get inspiration from greeting cards. Look at this cute card that I picked up at Target. I'm a huge Target fan. And then I just copied that little gift onto Addie's page. And so there's lots of places you can get inspiration for making your pages, but you need to be able to see your pictures. The other thing that I do that I really like is I have lots, I have actually four of these um, digital viewing frames on the main floor of my house so that my current photos that I want to spend time with are scrolling before me and my family pretty much all day long, every day. And I will see certain pictures and I'll go, you know, I can't wait to get downstairs and scrapbook those. That's another way that you can be seeing your pictures all the time. Okay, fundamental number two, or actually number three, is we're gonna talk about um, having pictures that are mixed up in category drawers. So as you learn to sort your pictures, you wanna take your best photos. I'm gonna stick this out of the way real quick. Be right back, guys. Okay, you wanna take your best photos and you wanna save some of them aside. I use a metal filing cabinet. It's like a library card catalog. And inside, I set aside some of my best personality pictures for my children. I didn't bring the whole drawers with me, but you can see right here, here's the little tab, and behind this tab are the best pictures of my oldest son, Clark, his personality pictures. So there are pictures, he's 18 years old, but I still have pictures of him as a baby. Okay, then he gets older. They're all mixed up and they're at my fingertips. At any point in time, I can go to this file and I can find great pictures of Clark, great personality photos. And I wanna show you when you have a file like that, what you can do. You can make a page quickly like this. 
Clark recently left me and went to college. <clears throat> it was hard. It was way harder than anybody told me it would be. <laughs> so after I came home and I was feeling very emotional, I wanted to make a page about sending him off and the final words that his father had for him. And I went right to the Clark personality folder and I was able to pull a picture of Clark as a tiny, tiny baby sleeping on his dad's lap. And then I also had all the other pictures that you see on this page. I didn't have to spend hours looking for them, printing them. They were right there in my category drawers. So productive scrapbookers have category drawers. Okay, step number four is cold storage. I'm back. Uh, Rick, Rick has a picture he's going to put on the screen of cold storage. And really all they are is just photo archivally safe photo boxes where you can hide the pictures you don't want to throw away but you don't want to focus on. So much of our guilt and obligation comes from just having enormous amounts of pictures that it's unreal, unrealistic to deal with. So get yourself some cold storage boxes so you can put the photos away that you really don't want to share, you really don't want to scrapbook. Okay? All right, step number five. Let's talk about some extra tools and files that I have that have really been inspiring to me to help me do the, create the kind of pages, um, scrapbooks that I want to create. One is called a family words file. All righty. So this is just a little recipe style um, box. And inside I have little tabbed cards and there's one for each person in my family. Then I have several notebooks around my house. And anytime someone says something quirky or funny that really, you know, that's just, I want to remember it, I grab a notebook. There's a notebook in my glove compartment, in my kitchen, in my bedroom, downstairs. I grab whichever notebook is closest and I write down what they said. And those little snippets, those authentic sound bites from my family members are just as inspiring as photos. So the fact that I have a file where those words are means that I can go to that file and I can be inspired. Let me show you what I did. I didn't bring the recipe, the, the family words file with me, but I brought the, the little pieces of paper that I got behind the Taft tab. And Taft is my fourth son. And I'm going to read you one of these things that I wrote down that he said. This was on August 20th, 2007. Taft said, Oh no, I said to Taft, I love you Taft, and I think I'll keep you forever. Is that okay? Taft said, yeah mom, you pretty much have to because you probably lost the receipt. Okay, so Taft, I want to save that. I want to remember that. I can go to Taft's personality file in the category drawers and I can find some great pictures of Taft and put them together on a page with just that quote and have a great scrapbook page. So that's a family words file and I think it will help make you very productive. Another extra that I have and I love is something that I showed you in the very beginning of this episode. It's called a square punch picture drawer. What this is, is this is a place where I can, I can use some of those pictures that I put in cold storage. They're kind of old. Maybe I've already scrapbooked the duplicates. Maybe I just don't want to deal with them. What I can do is I can sit down with a box of cold storage. Um, there's, there's still pictures I want to keep. I don't want to throw them away. And I can go through those pictures with one of my square punches and I can punch out the faces of the people that I love in those pictures. So it's a way of sort of repurposing photos that aren't really that great that I'm not using in and of themselves. Okay, so what I've got right here is I did bring the tray drawer. Tray's another one of my boys. And inside I have, I just have almost, I mean dozens and dozens of little tray face photos. You see that? Yeah, I got the thumbs up, so I, I think you can see that. So you can see that in this drawer, I have a ready supply of square punched pictures of tray. Now, let me show you what that means you can do. I've just made, well, not just, when Clark turned 16, I went to the square punch picture drawer that's labeled Clark, and I made this page called Don't Blink. Like, oh my gosh, these children grow up way too fast. So there's Clark at one, two, three, four, you get the idea, all the way up to 16. Those pictures, again, I didn't have to find them. They were ready for me to go in my square punch picture drawers. Here's a page I just made of my son, Chase, a little while ago, who is 16, just about to turn 17. Similar page, went to the square punch picture drawer. I think if your pictures are where you can see them on viewing frames, and in storage binders. And if you have a place where you can let your memories mingle in category drawers, you have cold storage where you can set things aside that you don't want to deal with immediately, and you have some extra files that are very specific to the things that you most want to do, you will be able to do 
something with some of your pictures and you will have a lot more fun doing it.